Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. Welcome back to another episode of Booking Magnet Magic. You are in for a treat today. I know I say that every time, but you really are in for another treat. Today, I'm interviewing Chantal Maurice. She is an award-winning actress and filmmaker. She's booked with over 15 television shows, including Pea Valley, Queen Sugar, Blue Bloods, Quantico, The Blacklist, and more. She is so sweet. She's also an amazing acting coach. Um, you can find her at CoStar Coaching. But, you know, most recently, you've seen her on Grey's Anatomy, which was such a juicy role. So I'm excited for you to learn about her process, learn about her journey. And she's going to give you some nuggets on how to deal with the ebbs and flows of this industry and just how to stay encouraged as you pursue your dream. So enjoy this interview with Chantal Maurice. Yay, Chantal is here. And we both got our booked shirts on. Is yours in the chair? Is this a chair in your, tilt your, can I, yeah. all this like a director's chair. Yeah. Yes, because we stay booked. We stay booked and we pass on that booking energy to people that we meet and connect and work with. Um, oh, thank you for saying yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. Yay. Well, you know, this is booking magnet magic. These conversations have been amazing. I hope you all have been enjoying them. If you're only listening to the podcast, I encourage you to come watch the videos because we cute. So you should watch us. <laughs> well, Chantal, again, and like I say before every interview, don't worry, all the links to Chantal will be in the show notes. You can research her more and find out all about the amazing things that she's doing, but I don't like to take up time doing that in the actual interview because I want to spend time getting to the juicy, juicy stuff. So. Tell us a little about yourself. How did you get started in entertainment and doing this acting thing? What's your, what's your history? So I have been a wannabe entertainer since as long as I can remember. Like as a child, I never played like games that the kids were playing. Like I was too busy trying to be just writing down the lyrics to Brandy's song, creating my own <laughs> music video. Like that's just yes. how I did. So I've always like been into acting, singing and dancing as a, as a child. Um, at like age three, I got approached by the producers of Criss Cross to be in one of their dance videos. Like just, I've just always been engulfed in just being a performer. I don't know where that came from, but it's just always been a part of me. So I started taking acting lessons when I was 10 okay. and I never stopped. Like I started training in t at 10. I did theater. I went to a performing arts high school, focused on theater, college, majored in theater. So it was like, I always knew that this was something, I knew that I wanted to be an entertainer. I have a strong passion for dance as well. And then it kind of became like, okay, my I, I felt more confident in acting because I had the training. Whereas dancing, it was just like a natural talent and ability. It, it was just in your body. It's yeah. Ability. And I, I still do it, but I that because I started training at such a young age, that confidence that that helped me build my confidence in my in the craft. So it was mm. like, okay, I think I'm gonna pursue acting and not try to like go on tour with a hip hop artist or something like that. So that's, that's like, kind of that background dancer. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'm, I went back to like the '80s and '90s just now. <laughs> That's, that's, and that's still one of my goals. Like, I still want to perform on a stage with a music artist. It's still a goal there, but the acting just took, like, the front seat. Yeah, I get that. Especially when you're multi-passionate and multi-talented, you know, like, sometimes things take the front seat at different times in your life. And where did you, I didn't hear, where did you grow up? Where did all this happen? Yes. So I was born in Brooklyn, New York, raised in Columbia, South Carolina. So South Carolina is where I started doing the the training. And then I went to college in Charleston, South Carolina. And um, after college, I moved to Harlem. So I was in Harlem, New York for about seven years. Okay. Okay. So after college, did you go to, after college, were you like, I'm going to New York for my acting? Or was it just like, I want to just go back to my roots. That's where I started. So yes and no. Um, I actually got an, an internship I used to work at a, a, while I was in school, I worked for Ann Taylor Factory Outlets. Mm -hmm. And my senior year in college, they introduced an internship at their flagship store in Times Square. It was a fashion internship. Okay. And so I knew I didn't really have experience with fashion, but I knew the brand because I had been working there for six months. So I applied for this internship because I knew I had to get out of South Carolina. Like, 
I didn't know where I was going to go or what I was going to do, but I knew that I had to just leave. And so I got that internship and it from an internship turned to a temp position, which gave me six months in New York, you know, with pay. Like I was getting paid very well and I was able to stay with a family member in Harlem. So that's what got me going in New York. So I didn't have to go to New York like struggling. I was able to go and just kind of like take the six months to really work and yeah. stack up my coins. And then it was... Then I hit the ground running. Gotcha. Um, I love. I'm and that we're kind of similar in that story of I'm I'm from the Bronx. I moved to Atlanta in the '90s. Then after I went back to New York for college, and I came back to Atlanta to get my union card. Like just doing that oh, yeah. that back and forth because I was like, I need to get my union card. These open calls. Who this is for yeah. those of you who are younger. There that, there was a thing called pounding the pavement where you literally you right. got. The, the backstage newspaper, you looked for the audition, especially if you if you didn't have an agent or if you were non-union and you would wait hours hoping- Standing to, in those lines. Oh my gosh, you'd have to bring your lunch. Some, something all of like, it. Because you can't leave. You right. can't leave. If you leave, your spot is gone. If you right. leave, your spot is gone. So. <laughs> oh, you youngins don't know. <laughs> So, you know, I was like, I'm going back to Atlanta to get my union card quicker. So I did a, a kid show at the Alliance Theater, got my union card, then went back to New York. So had to had to be strategic. I love that. While while you were doing these uh brandy reenactments and have background dancing in the house, who your what was that family dynamic like? Where you looked at like, oh, there she go again, or was that really, really encouraging your household? So I'm an only child. I'm a mother's only child. I grew up around my cousins and I'm the only person in my family that is like really interested in entertainment. So it was so interesting because at first everybody was just kind of like, this is interesting. But then after a while they were like, well, she's, she's not going to stop. So <laughs> I remember like my first, I, I when uh, I was really inspired by Robert Townsend and he just, as, as a kid, like he, he had a sitcom and I just, I just wanted to be for some reason. I was like, I want to be like Robert Townsend. So I asked my dad for Christmas. I think I was like 10 or nine years old. I was like, can you get me a, a camcorder? And he went to the pawn shop and got me some old school cheap oh, thing. And oh. I went to my cousins and I said, okay, I'm going to record you guys. And I need you to say this line. You say this. And they're looking at me like, we, we're on break from school. Like we just want to play and have fun. I'm like, but this is fun. It's like, fun. This is fun. <laughs> and it was like, no, it's not. It's only fun for you. So it was interesting because I'm the only person, but I'm still raised in a family of love. So even though people quite didn't really understand it, they always supported. it. They always supported me, even though it was like, well, I don't really know what you're doing, but I'm rooting for you. So You seem happy with it. So just keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love it. We're so similar. I mean, my brother didn't come along until I was 14. So I had 14 years of doing the Christine Horn show, talking to the the dolls. I used my thing. It wasn't with the camcorder. I used to reenact late night talk shows and be all the guy. I was the host. I was the guest. I had the background music from my, my little tape recorder. Right. And my best friend at the time was like, she was a, just an in, a intellectual loved just reading. So she was like, what do you have me doing? I'm like you gotta be a guest on my talk show. My late night show. So you had a talk show. I did radio. So I would be like a VJ and I'd play the music. Like I'd, I'd take radio breaks and like make the commercials as well. It's a mess. Both of us are a mess. That's so fun. <laughs> we are doing what we were meant to do. Yeah. It's so nice to, oh, that's making me a bit of emo emotional. Just when I think back to, I had, what's coming up for me is, and maybe some of you watching this can resonate the older we get sometimes the more professional we get and the more polished work we do in the world we don't always give our I don't always give myself permission to just play I'm doing better at that for the past year I've been intentional about playing what I call playing messy or playing free and just actually calling it play but the joy I'd have just by myself not worrying about what anybody thought I was just creating because that's just what I wanted to do. And it makes me think I've always been a writer. I've always been a performer. I've always been doing this. So when that voice comes up and makes me second guess, like Christine, no one's going to watch that. That's not good enough. But it's like, 
wait a minute, I've always been doing this. And this is, as we are talking about this, I'm seeing myself in my bedroom in the Bronx and I'm seeing the little Chantal with her radio show and like we're, with the camera and the cousins, like it's so such a beautiful image. Um, and I think each and every one of you who, who are listening, not everybody started as young as we did, but I certainly know that permission to play is, is so needed at any age. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So um, because like you said, we get so far away from that. Yeah. When you were younger and in between, you know, production, <laughs> when you watched people on TV or on stage or in movies, what what was it, the people who you enjoyed most, what was it about them that drew just made you lean in and lock in on them? What qualities did they have? I have to be very honest. As a young person watching films and movies I was just in awe of black people mm, yeah I just I don't know what it just I would just I just loved watching black people it just made me feel so good inside and probably because I saw my I saw myself right you know that representation, um, that yeah. representation. so you know, it, it wasn't until I got older and started doing a little more training where I would watch for other things. But in the beginning, I just loved, especially watching black women. I just, just always thought black women are the most beautiful women in the world. And just to see them on TV, really just, I just was glued to the TV. So when I would see like Vivica Fox, I it literally, I would just be glued because- That's right. Of, like, yeah, it really, I don't even think, it wasn't even about like, you know, the- um, the craft per se. I was just so mesmerized by watching black people on TV. It just it did something to me. And of course now, like now when I when I watch certain things, I'm looking for that raw emotion. You know, just to, I want to feel something. Whether I'm like escaping my daily life and I'm laughing, or it's like I and I, I cry very easily. So it's like if you get me to cry, I'm locked in with you. Yeah. You know, so I like to feel that and that I like to feel raw emotions. Uh, mm. And vulnerability. I'm really moved by when I feel like an artist is being vulnerable. Mm. And um, but yeah, as a kid, I just was like, I just love watching black women on TV. I love it. <laughs> oh, I love that so much. Just the power and no matter who you are, the power of seeing yourself and a representation of yourself on screen just matters. <laughs> yeah. It just matters. So you know, I remember seeing a show called Mama, I Want to Sing in New York. I might have been like eight. And I was, it was a little girl. And I was like, I looked at my mom like, I want to sing too. Like, wow, she gets to do this. Like, and people come to see her. It was so amazing. Um, but I, I love what you said too about tapping into what feels like raw and vulnerable. Uh, you know, I think I find that the things that we are, are attracted to are the things that we end up borrowing a bit in our own career in our own in our own art because that is what we want to see more of and if we get to try that on and bring that out I think that just happens naturally so I have a question for you what do you use my Oprah moment okay what do you know for sure you know when Chantal walks in a room when Chantal does a tape or an audition or steps on set what do you know for sure makes you magnetic what is your magical superpower that's Ooh. undeniable. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I don't give that question ahead of time. The thing you know you bring. I feel like what I bring is not something that's in my control. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I don't, I don't feel like I bring anything. What it is is just placed. God placed it in me, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm able to connect with people on a certain level. And I think I'm also able to make people feel seen and heard, but that's not anything that I can take credit for. Like I, I don't try to, to do that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's the thing that I'm talking about. The thing that we know is just that yeah. when you step in a room, what makes people draw, what draws people to you? So I think I have a, I, I know that I have a light. I have a light in me because I am a natural healer. So, um, I'm a healer, but healing looks, looks different for different people. So my healing is not in like a pharmaceutical or medical way, anything like that. My healing is more of like soul healing. 
And mm -hmm. I think that there's something about me that makes people feel calm and comfortable. Mm -hmm. and, and that's when I'm able to just like, literally I'll get downloads if I'm supposed to say something to somebody or if I'm supposed to encourage someone or if I'm supposed to, you know, inspire someone, I'll just, I don't plan to say these things. I literally just get around people and it just, they, it starts coming out and then people they'll start crying or they'll look at me like, how'd you know that? And I'm like, I, I don't know. It just, right. I'm a vessel. I am, I am a vessel. So I, yeah, I am yeah. a, I'm a vessel and God uses me to, to help and inspire other people. So I have a way of making people seem, feel seen and, you know, and feel like they're heard. And I think that's, that's something that that's just a, a gift. That's definitely a gift that I have. Mm, I love that. And I know the question can throw people off, but I know that each and every one of us has something magnetic and magical about us within us. You know, and like and like Chantal just said, it's not something that you will go and rehearse. Like, no, I interviewed Charity Jordan, an actress, and she was like, I know I'm I'm joy. I just even when I'm not trying, like I that's what I bring to the room. Mm -hmm. and, and it's true. I've known her since she was 14 years old. I'm like, that is true. No matter what, it could be a funeral, and charity will find a way, not even find a way, just just will be the thing that makes us all exhale. You know what I mean? And that's not, that's, that's truly a gift. So I love that. And yes, to the healing and yes, to you being open and allowing, because that sometimes when people have that gift, you can want to shut it off. Like it's can be, it can be scary. Right. Um, so I love that. Hey, what's up? It's Christine Horn, The Booking Magnet. I am so excited to invite you to our next event. It is called Booking Magnet Live. It's happening in Atlanta, Georgia on July 15th and 16th, 2022. You're gonna spend two days surrounded with actors oh, just like you. Actors who want more, actors who are looking for a safe space, a sanctuary, a safe haven to express themselves, to learn, to grow, and to connect. So I'm excited for you to experience that. Make sure you join us July 15th and 16th. You can click the link below, and I'm so excited to see you there. You know, I'm curious to know You've been performing for a long time. What gig, what paid gig proved to you, I'm really good at this. I'm really good at this. I will say that came from a character I played. Her name is Cherry Grigio. Ooh, and that's Cherry. Yes, Cherry Grigio. The show um, is Teenage Bounty Hunters. They had one season. It's on Netflix and I played Cherry the Slippery Stripper. So this job for me, I, I was able to, to use multiple talents. I, I wasn't only acting, but she's a stripper. So I had to dance. Like I had a whole dance sequence. Mm. But on top of that, I was in a strip club. And me, <laughs> in my brain, I never, ever thought I'm like, I'm not a slim girl. I never thought that I would be scantily clad <laughs> with a job. I thought that that was for other, other actresses. I said, well, I don't have to deal with that because I'm not the ingenue. I'm not the, like, right. so y'all have to. So when I, when I had to really step into this character, but she was so fun. Like she was just so fun. And I felt like, okay, I was, I was made for this. And all of the, the natural uh, the self-consciousness, right? The like, oh my gosh, my body, like I'm around so many people, Method Man's over there. I've got Kadeem Hardison that I'm playing with. Like I'm like all of these thoughts when I, once those cameras start rolling and I, they all just went away and watching her back, I didn't see myself. Like I didn't see Chantal. Uh -huh. I literally saw Cherry. So watching it, I was like, yo, she did really good. Oh my God, that's me. <laughs> But that's when I felt like, oh no, like I really, I really am able to transform and to really bring these characters to life. And I love that. Like, I didn't see Chantal, like, even though she's a dancer, she wasn't anything like me. Yeah. So it, it was just so amazing to be able to watch your work back and to say like, wow, I really brought this person to life and I don't even see myself. Like I didn't see myself at all. And so I, I think that was, that was the first time that 
number one, I felt like I was able to use all of my strengths because a lot of the jobs that I book, I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't really, I don't really feel like I get to play. Right. And I got to play and then watching it back, I was like, wow, a whole character, like she's, she's, I didn't see myself at all. So that to me was just one of those moments. Where I was like, oh no, I'm, I, I'm, I am really good at this. I know what I'm doing. Yes. Yes. I love it. Y'all, if you're watching and listening, I want you to take a moment. If you've had a chance to do something and maybe yours isn't a paid gig yet. Maybe it's something you've done locally, community theater. I don't care what it is, but it's important to look at your, and I know some people like, I don't like to look at my work. And that's, that's your process. That's your process. That does not work for me because I want to see my work. I want to see how I've grown. I want to see how I can improve um, and honor the work that I did and the preparation that I did, you know? So I love that you were able to see. And the fact that you were like, look at her. Okay. Like, (laughs) Yeah, like, oh, she did good. She did that girl good. <laughs> yes. And I say, hold on to that. You know, I'm not saying you need this advice, but just as anyone who's listening, hold on to that so that when those auditions come up and maybe you don't get the callback or the booking, you don't start second guessing your value, your worth, your level of talent because you didn't book something. Right. Like, remember that. No, I am good. I'm good at this. I do my work. I know what I know how to show up and show out. So this booking that I did or did not get does not define me as an artist, period. Um, and I think that's so important. You know, we've been doing this a long time and the life of an actor is like, it's like this, it's like an emotional, it's like an emotional roller coaster, right? Ebbs and flows, the ups and the downs. Can you talk about how you, how you deal, how you cope when it's quiet and it's, or it's appears to be slow for you, or it's the coming so close. (laughs) I remember that. So actually Teenage Bounty Hunters, I read for a role. I'm not going to say which role it was, but it was a pretty juicy role opposite Kadeem Hardison. And it was down to it. I was told it was down to me only, but then it turned out they went in whole, whole different direction. Mm. And I just remember being like, seriously? Like I was like this, this close, you know? And so those moments sting. Yeah. So how do, how do you deal? What are some tools you use for, for mindset or to, to cope with that? So if you were to ask me this question years ago, I would have said a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo. I would have, yeah, now I realized that I have to fulfill my artist and my creative self in other ways. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm teaching, I teach weekly dance classes. I take dance classes because again, dance is something that fills me up. So I can't always just focus on the acting and this is just for me. And I used to be in that space where it was just, it was all about the acting. I had to book the job. I had to, and it, it, it drove me insane Yeah, because it's so much out of your control that you were, it was just too much. So I realized there are so many other things that I like to do and that I get enjoyment out of. I need to start enjoying my time more because what's for me is not going to miss me. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, it's, and, and I have, and I get a lot of those where it's like these callbacks and it's like super, super close. And it's just like, okay. And I used to think about it like this job is going to change everything. Right. It's going to be the job <laughs> where now I got a driver. This is going to be the job. where now, it, it, That's how I thought. But now I literally don't think about it anymore. Like, of course there are things that I audition where I'm like, that would be really cool to work on. I really, that, that would be a great character, a great story. But I really had to focus on relieving that and putting my attention elsewhere. So that's with me dancing. That's with me coaching and teaching other actors. That's with me doing my DIYs, like making, I love making, I love candles. So I'm like, I'm spending so much money on candles. I need to learn how to make them. So I'll put some time aside. I'll make some candles, some body oils. Um, As far as mindset, I have um, a meditation tent that's right here in this room. So I've got this super cool lace tent with these pillows inside and a diffuser and my salt lamp. And I go in that tent and I, I just meditate. I pray. I sing. I go to sleep. But just really trying to change the my mindset because my mindset was so like 
I got to do this. And I think that was for me because I wanted to prove to other people. Ooh, like, come on. In, in my brain, I said, well, I've been doing this for so long. Like, I need people to know that I am the real deal. So I got a book. I got to get this deadline article. I need to do this. And when I sat with myself, I realized, like, you want all of that stuff so that other people can see you in a certain light. But what about just dealing with with yourself internally and and having that that fun internally? So I love I started with theater. I read plays. I love reading theater. Um, I'll do like readings with my friends. Just nothing, nothing that's advertised, nothing that's promoted. But I just have to always be doing the work because like you and I said, as kids, we were creating. So now if we stop creating and just wait for an offer to come through, we're just holding ourselves stagnant. So I had to just release all of that and release wanting to be validated by the world and really just take care of myself. So, hey, today I'm going to meditate. I'm going to do some reading. I'm a journal and I'm going to make a candle. And that's it. And I, I, I'm not going to worry about the things that I didn't book because I truly believe what's for me is for me. Does it hurt? Absolutely. So that's though I have those moments where, hey, I talk to my friends. Uh, my core group of actors, we have those moments where we can like vent about certain things. They're like, man, I was so close. Like it, that sucked. I really, really wanted to book that. I allowed myself to feel those feelings, but then I have to move on. I can't stay there. I have yeah. to continue to create. Oh, I love that. Thank you for, for being open and sharing that. You know, so many times artists can feel like what's wrong with me that I feel this way or that I can't shake it off. And we live in a in this industry, yes, we need tough skin. And it's just like, you know, I talk about it as, you know, sometimes grieving a loss, you know, loss of, you, you know, we do all the work before we ever get paid. You know what I mean? And, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, I didn't get that. And then, oh, next audition. Okay. And you're stacking up years and years of, of, of nose of what make what feels like rejection. And if we don't sit and honor it too, you know, you know, I was talking to Brittany, um, Brittany Inge and like, we got to honor the feeling. Like, I know I got another audition to do that's due later, but can I sit just like you said, can I go sit in my tent real quick to just honor yeah. that this hurt, you know, I'm a little disappointed, but yeah, I'm gonna get back up. Cause this is what I love to do. And you're not gonna take, no one can take that from me, but you know, many people, you know, I, I just want people, us to us to know our community to know that it's okay to to feel it, process it, you know. Yeah. And I, I love I love hearing about all of that because also people also want to know okay, what do you do? How do you how do you get by? You know, looking I'm the queen of talent therapy, y'all. I stay with a therapist, so get you some help. Get a counselor, get a therapist. If you're able to, some are covered by insurance, some are not, find a way. You can also check out the Actors Fund always has resources that they can connect you with. And I'm not, I, I don't take this lightly. Like this is part of part of our my mission with the work that I do with artists is like, we got to cultivate and maintain that mental health because this is a, this is an interesting journey that we are on. <laughs> Yeah. And it looks different for, for different people, you know? So I think for me, finding the meditation and the stillness, that's what really helped because I had, like you said, so much pent up these, mm -hmm. these, when you feel like you're being rejected. And it's like, sometimes you wonder, like, I feel like I'm about to go crazy. And I don't know why, because I wasn't able to release those feelings and release that hurt. So I was just keeping it in. But right. now just with the rest and the meditation um, that I'm able to do, I'm able to kind of release certain feelings. And I also do get myself some crab legs. That always makes me feel better. So oh, yes. <laughs> I'm not going to oh. lie. Be honest. No, look, it's a good comfort food. And it's not too fattening either. Yeah. Yeah. Just go eat. Don't do too much butter. You know, you can't do right. too much butter sauce. But, you know, because you, you do need things to continue to make you feel better. And yeah. those, that's something that makes me feel better. For me, crab legs is one. And usually the crab, crab legs are actually more of a celebratory food. For me, the comfort food is hot wings. Y'all, that's that's my that's my truth, y'all. Don't judge me, okay? Yes. Yes. <laughs> do you? Everybody got to do what they need to do. Can you think about, it could have come from anybody, what's some good advice that you've gotten over the years, perhaps from another artist or about being in this journey? 
Mm-hmm. Is there, has, has someone said anything to you on the set, a mentor, something that you still carry with you in how you approach the work or the, in the industry? Some advice that I got that took me a while to digest because I ne- didn't want to hear it mm-hmm. was the fact that in this business, because it is a business, it doesn't really ma- matter how talented you are. And I did not want to hear that because I'm it's like, hard, well, it's hard to hear. <laughs> excuse me. Um, it, it, it does matter because I take this very seriously. I, right. you know, I take working my training hard. seriously. Right. I'm working hard. I'm, I'm, and to hear that when somebody was like, and this was someone who's in more of like an executive position. So they're not an actor, but they're more of a decision maker. And they were like, you know, you can be the most talented person in the world, but if nobody knows you exist, and that's something that I was, I fought, I, I, and I still fight with it. I still fight with it because I'm like, but I just want to focus on that, the, the acting, you know, but learning that, okay, well, focus on the acting, but also, yes, and there is a business side of this. Mm-hmm. So I think for so much of my career, I focus only on the craft and I ignored the business side because I'm like, well, my talent speaks for itself. Right. So that was something that to this day still sticks with still sticks with me because I can get kind of stuck and being like, but I don't want to do the business stuff. I, I just want to focus on the craft. So finding that balance because I was off balance, I was completely neglecting the business show business. And I was only focused on my craft of acting. So really just finding that balance of still learning. And it's important to still understand. Like I didn't I didn't know anything about contracts when I would get my checks, like I was oblivious to it because I only focused on the acting. Mm-hmm. So that's something that I'm, I'm still, you know, working on and I'm still trying to make sure that I have a balance and that I understand what I'm doing because this is my career. So I do need to understand the contracts. I do need to understand what's happening um, in the union with residuals. And so that's, that's something that I'm a piece of advice that I always knew, but I fought and now I'm embracing it to, to just kind of have more of a balance and to learn more. I love that. I love that. And it's real. You know, I tell, I mentor a lot of people and people have a lot of resistance toward uh, social media, you know, and I know you and I are going to be working together soon. Um, it's like, it's a ne- it's necessary. And if, ex- if studio execs and movies and TV shows still advertise, well, we got two too. You know, I purposely keep it's at the time of this recording, it's we're getting ready for the SAG awards. So as a SAG uh, after member, I get, you know, we get the things to watch. And so I keep, if you're watching, you'll see this. I keep all the cards of, for advertisements for when they're like leading, you know, leading actor and such and such. I keep these as examples of things, things that I could do for myself. Mm. Right. So because we always need to be putting ourselves out there and teaching people how to see us. If you've only been playing in certain types of roles and you want to expand, well, you got to show us, you got to prove that you can do it. And, but you got to let us know, look, if McDonald's going to still talk about them Big Macs and fries that we know they got all these years, well, <laughs> we need to show up too. Right. Oprah Winfrey still got ads going on Facebook and Instagram. Well, I need to also. Yeah, because they're they clearly understand something, right? So, you know, I love that you you're working through that, growing through that, embracing it more and more, and you're gonna have to too because I say get used to doing it on your own because when you are a series regular or the star of a movie with a big budget, they gonna need you to do press, they gonna need you to do more radio interviews. You got to get so used to putting yourself out there, um, and you'll already be prepared. You're already prepared. One last thing before we go, and thank you for being so uh, open and, and honest with your answers. I want you to imagine, I want you to think about, and I've asked everyone this, think about the seasoned actor watching this at home who's been doing this for 15 plus years probably, but maybe they've hit a plateau, things have slowed down and they're feeling a little frustrated, a little depleted. Think about the new actor who's new and might still be feeling confused and frustrated because nothing seems to be happening. Either one of these might want to throw in the towel, wonder, am I even good enough? Should I even, what? Maybe this isn't for me. You know, it's been a lot of auditions. Maybe this, maybe I just need to just go back and get a job and just, what would you say to encourage these actors? Ooh. I would say that being an actor is definitely a calling. 
and I honestly don't think you can give up on a calling because if God places the passion inside of you, he's going to create the space for you. It may not look like what you envisioned, right? It may look like, like you said, I may have to go get a job. Well, go get a job. That's okay. I think mm-hmm. so many times we feel like in order to be an actor, we don't have, we don't work a job. We don't do this. We, 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 all of our money comes from acting and acting alone. And we have these things that we've created about what an actor is and what he or she looks like. And I think it's all false. If in your heart and soul, this is your calling, then act. You don't need permission from anybody. You don't have to wait on validation from a studio or a network to do your calling. Even if you're just, you know, doing some theater or reading a play, you've got to just do it because the energy will keep going. Work begets work. So you just put that energy out there and some things will happen for you. But I think sometimes we have to reimagine what it looks like because we think that being an actor is supposed to look a certain way. And when our lives don't look like that, we tend to get discouraged and feel like, oh, well, I don't have the deadline or I have a part-time job or I have a full-time job and that's okay. I I don't think that there's one way to do this thing. So I think figuring, getting, you know, tapping into your why, but also knowing that God will provide the space for you. You just have to be open to a new vision of it, you know, a, a remixed vision of it. It may not be what you thought it was when you were in college or when you know, you first wanted to do this, but it's definitely possible. And I think we've got to take our power back. We give so much of our power away to industry people, agents, casting directors, you know, the decision makers, we give all of our power away and then we feel so depleted and we feel so hopeless. Like, well, I'm not booking or I'm not working or I'm not a series regular, but you are you're still an actor and you can still do the work. You can still act. It doesn't yeah. have to be validated by, by anyone else. So I would just say to validate yourself and to take your power back. Take it back. Oh, I couldn't have said it any better. I love that. Take your power back. I'm all about that because we give so much of it away. Oh, Chantal, thank you so much, y'all. This is so juicy. Make sure you download it. Make sure you take a screenshot of this. Tag us so we let us know what you think. Let us know what you had a where you had a breakthrough or an aha moment today. Chantal, I'm so excited for all things coming your way, all the blessings, all the bookings. I'm so excited. I love seeing you on my screen. Um, again, all of Chantal's links will be in the show notes, so make sure you connect with her and myself. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.